It's Tio and Kira in the Mornings Podcast. Like what you hear? Give us five stars. Waiting all day for the good stuff. Tio and Kira, I just can't get enough. Second date update is what I want to hear. They're so funny, they make it hard to stare. Kick back and relax, the show's lots of fun. Grab some coffee and a cinnamon bun. Kira in the morning. Happy Thursday, October 21st, 2021. 535. Kiki. JJ. What it do? Hey. What it do, Bobo? Hey, dance partner. Bobo. We did it again. Did a little TikToking. We yeah. took the talk. Did, we did, walked uh, the walk. Did uh, we? Uh, did we break the internet? I didn't no. get a chance. No, no, not, no this was not, not even doing close. As good. It's not doing as good. That's okay though. But isn't it still early? Or I suppose it's still early. People are liking it enough, you know. Uh, Chio and I did the Neon Moon Remix Challenge and uh, shared the video. It's up on our Instagram if you want to check it out. WOKQ ninety seven five is where you can find us. We're trying to, um, you know. Appeal to the younger crowd. They're on the TikTok. Yeah, or just whatever, whatever's hot. Yeah. Whatever, whatever's in the moment. So, and it's, ha- but, and it's fun either way. Now, have you put it on the Facebook page? I did, yeah. Oh, okay. But I not, uh, not getting a, a lot of traction yet. Oh, you know, people are saying nice things. They're supportive. I think okay. they just like when we make fools out of ourselves, which who well, doesn't? Well, I think this could be it because the other one that we did definitely made more of a fool. It wasn't. Th- this one was a little easier. Yeah, it's true. So maybe not as foolish as it could have been. Yeah, does we that just, make we sense? Have, yeah, we have to look more foolish yeah. to get more likes. And I, I'm down for that. We're, I have no yeah. pride, no dignity. But uh, it, it was fun. So check check it out. Yeah, check it out. I showed Steve and my husband. He's like, "Nice dumpster in the background." That's what did it. <laughs> That's what did it. See. He's like, why are you and Chio slow dancing in a parking lot next to a dumpster? I was like, because that is our vibe. That's correct. That's our aesthetic. Does he know how successful the other one was? I'm assuming he saw the other one. Oh, yes. Yes. What, uh, what's the likes on the other one? You said it's like close to like 7,000 or something, the first one? No, not 7,000 likes. 7,000 views. Oh, so I'm, that's what I meant. 7,000 views on the other one. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about the new one we did yesterday? Where are we at? Uh, 1,500. Okay, oh, we just posted it. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, we're not doing it for the likes. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I almost lied. <laughs> yes, like I it. I started to lie, and I said, you know what? We're all friends yeah. here. We're doing it for the likes. Like it, okay? Like it or I'll kill you. Share it to all your friends. Yes, please. All right. What else is going on with you? Uh, Well, um, you know, I FaceTime the baby all the time, my grandson, Bodie. Oh, you're seeing him this weekend. I'm uh, seeing him tomorrow. Tomorrow. Can't wait to lay down with him. So we they bought this, uh, you know, like a giant playpen. Everybody knows what a playpen is. Love that. This one is really big, so he has a lot of room, you know, to move. Oh, is he crawling and stuff? He uh, he has he hasn't mastered the crawl yet. Uh, He's doing it. Like he gets up and then he starts like rocking. Yes. You know, he does about the, to take uh, off. I, f- I forgot what you call it, like the army crawl. Oh. You know, when you're trying to lay low, that he does. So he gets one. That's funny. Uh, he gets from one side to the other. He, one way or but, another. But he's, he's doing the army crawl. Mm-hmm. And uh, he sort of has said his like first word. Is it grandpappy? Uh, no. I hope he does say something like that. Um, what's that? Bop, 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 bop. Bop, bop, or something like that. That's not a or word. Bop, bop, well, it's, yeah, it's not a real word, but at least he's saying something. So he's making sounds. And, and he keeps flapping his lips. 
Oh. Like a fish. Cool. So he's getting his third tooth is coming up top. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess maybe that's why. Because he keeps going. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Oh, it the is, little weirdo. It is the, fu- I don't know, it's because he feels that tooth yeah. coming in. Doesn't, know, feels doesn't know what to do. <laughs> wow. And and I just watch him. I just, I sit there for like, you know, two minutes just staring at Who him. Who needs TV when you have baby Bodie? Entertaining you. That's the funniest thing, man. So, oh, I'm happy for you. Looking forward to uh, hanging out with him. A whole weekend of baby yeah. snuggles. Yeah, that's correct. All right, we have the uh, the mind bender next. It is a Thursday, throwback Thursday. Play some uh, some cool throwbacks. Mm-hmm. And uh, second date update. Coming up to a brand new one, 8 o'clock hour. Brought to you by... Because that's the good stuff. Curtin and his 10-year-old daughter, Abby, live in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and they have a very special bond. Abby was diagnosed with this rare neurological disease. It's called Lee disease when she was just a baby, so she's wheelchair-bound. And uh, she and her papa bear, Greg, just completed the Boston Marathon together. He pushed her the entire way wow. in a running wheelchair. And they raised money for the disease that Abby suffers from. They were able to raise over $10,000 to support the fight against Lee's disease. And if you think running a marathon just like on your own is hard, running while pushing a wheelchair is an extra challenge. Greg said it's totally worth it. And in moments of weakness where he you know, feels like he needs to take a break or, yeah. or give up, um, Abby is sitting there with a big smile and words of encouragement, and that keeps him going. That's some good stuff right there. Thank you, Chio. I see what you did there. All right. You rascal. Despite multiple pre-existing conditions, Kiki, Mm -hmm. Okay. plus this woman, grandmother, 80 years old, California grandmother, is heading home from the hospital after spending 10 months 10 months battling with COVID-19. Oh, my God. That's a long time. Yeah. Jeez Louise. So, according to her doctors, they say that doesn't, this is not like the everyday thing with someone that has multiple pre-existing conditions, Mm -hmm. someone who's 80 years old, and here's the doctor crediting uh, the family. When the family were beginning to be there uh, with many hours during the course of every day, and I mean literally every day, you could see it in her eyes. She was, she'd was perk up. She began to heal so much faster. The involvement of her family, coroner doctors say, that, that played a major role. All the time, every day being there. Feeling supported, feeling loved, it can help you. Yeah. It can heal you. That is the good stuff. Want to reach out to Chio and Kira? Text them from the app. Chio and Kira in the morning. Hey, coming up later on this morning, 820, the first of four code words, escape to Florida. We're giving away this trip. Uh, oh, the trip's going to be given away in, in December, right? Mm-hmm. This is December. When the temps drop here. Oh, so it's going to be mega cold, snowy, icy. But you, you could be in Florida checking out Old Dominion. And working on your tan. Yeah. Airfare, hotel, we got you. <laughs> Come on. Don't reach for your wallet. You don't need it. Don't even bring it. Got you. Plus $500 spending cash. That's why Kiki said don't don't reach for your wallet. 820, code word number one. Listen for it. Hey, it's the Famous People 411 on Geo and Kira in the morning. The Famous People 411 is brought to you by Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses on Route 1 in Seabrook. So, Zach Galifianakis, who's a comedian and an actor, you might know him best from his role as Alan in the Hangover movies. Hilarious. So, he has two sons, and they're four and seven at the moment, and he really wants to preserve their innocence, so he doesn't, he hasn't told them that he's an actor, he doesn't want them to watch uh, his movies yet. He doesn't think that they're ready. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's, his sons actually think that he's a librarian. And That's what how, he tells them. How old is the oldest? Seven? Seven. Okay. Yeah, he admits that. The uh, four-year-old he, ain't going to have a clue. So. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, when they get older, he will let them watch their um, his movies. But at the moment, he wants 
to remain like, I'm your dad and I don't do anything to embarrass you, you know, yet. Right, right. Kind right. of thing. So it's kind of funny. Um, if you're planning to dress up as Reba McIntyre for Halloween, mm. uh, she's fine with it. Flattered. Tickled even. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a crucial bit of advice from Reba. She says, you have to have the red hair. That's a non-negotiable. Yeah. So whether you're going to rock a wig or, uh, you know, get some spray paint for your hair, whatever you're going to do, it. you got to do it. it. And it. you also have to rock the red dress because she figures that you're going to want to do fancy, you know, her fancy music video. Oh, okay. And uh, so red hair, red dress. And uh, with that, you have Reba's blessing. Good. Yeah, pretty right. good. good. I imagine that's a um, popular Halloween costume, Reba, and also Dolly Parton for women. Uh, I, I I would go more Dolly because mm -hmm. Reba's not like you know she's not current. Even though Dolly's not like current music wise, but do, uh, I, she's I don't know. I, I don't see Reba being like a popular costume. To be no, honest with, no, maybe like in the nineties when she had the TV show. No, but it's it's fun. It's fun to dress up like her. She's an icon. I think it. I think it will happen. Okay, for sure. Uh, uh, add Brett Young to the long list of country stars who now has a Christmas album. Just about everybody does. Uh, you can expect songs like "Silver Bells" and "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." Here he is talking about how the idea came to be. Last year we put out "Silver Bells" and we did that kind of lo-fi and a different approach to Silver Bells, and that was where the idea was born. So the first thing I did was with the Silver Bells production, I went to Colby and I said, we need to do a song. So we did that, and then I totally just <laughs> played that for everybody that I wanted on the record. Excellente. And he has a lot of collaborations on this album. Here he is talking about that. We didn't know it was going to be an and friends until everybody started signing on. And, and we got everybody we asked for, and I just tried to pick my favorite Christmas songs, the classics that I grew up listening to. Brett Young and Friends sing the Christmas classics. That's the name of the album, and it'll be available for purchase tomorrow, October 22nd, if you want to get into the Christmas spirit a little early. Mm -hmm. And that is the Famous People 411. New episode of Second Aid Update uh, later on on the show, 8 o'clock hour, like around 8.10. And right after that, we'll give you the 8.20 code word, Escape to Florida. With Old Dominion. 97. 1-844-975-9467. To celebrate the release of their new album, Time to... Smart Speaker. Set our skill and just ask Alexa to play 97.5 WOKQ. Now for Can't Beat Kira. Brought to you by the Goat Bar and Grill. Trina and Clinton, Maine. Hello. Hello. Are you ready to get down to business? I um, sure am. Okay, let's kick Kira out of the studio. Okay, Kira. You know what to do. See you later. Okay, bye -bye. Trina. You got some style. You got some swag. Mm -hmm. I respect bye -bye. it. Bye-bye, Felicia. <laughs> Kira. All right, she has left the studio. This is a three-question pop, 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 pop culture contest. You get more right, you win. A tie, Kira gets the win. But if you tie her, we're going to give you the prize. Cool? Okay. These questions are from the uh, 2000s. Okay. And good luck, Trina. Question number one. Which year did Apple release its first ever iPhone? What year, this is multiple choice, this one. What year did Apple release its first ever iPhone? Your choices are 2005, 2006, or 2007? 2005. 2005. Question number two. Which sitcom revolves around a group of people working in a paper supply company. Can you repeat that? Yes. Which uh, TV show, sitcom, mm -hmm. revolves a group of people working in a paper supply company? Um, was it a paper company? I don't know, Pat. Okay, why don't, why don't you just throw out a, a guess? Sure. Um, Let's pick a show. Any show. Any show. Better than that. Anim uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. Okay. Question number three. 
In this TV sitcom, The Big Bang Theory, what was Sheldon Cooper's catchphrase? What was his phrase? Yes, his catchphrase. Sheldon's catchphrase. Um, happy kitty, sleepy kitty. Um. It's one word. One word. Meow. Final answer? Yeah. Okay. All right. How well do you think you did? Not very good. <laughs> All right. You hold on. And we're going to play part two of Can't Be Kira. We'll do that next. And then after that, second date update. Then right after that, code word. We got it coming up. 820. Escape to Florida with Old Dominion. We're paying for airfare, hotel, giving you some spending cash. Five hundred, five hundred dollars. All right, all that and more coming up. Ninety-seven five. Alfred can't beat Kira. Brought to you by the Goat Bar and Grill. All right, Kiki's back. Here I am. Kira Lou. In which year did Apple release its first first ever iPhone? So multiple choice here on this. Oh five, oh six, or oh seven. Oh five. You're going oh five. Trina said oh five. <laughs> no, two thousand and seven. Oh, we were off train. Yeah. Yep. So yes, we were. Zero, zero. She's like, I'm happy you got it wrong, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which sitcom revolves a group of people working in a paper supply company? Oh, uh, The Office. The Office. Trina couldn't think of anything. You say The Office. The Office is correct. Alrighty. Yes, Trina, you ever watched? I'm assuming you didn't watch The Office. No, I did not. It is one nothing, Kira. Question number three in the sitcom The Big Bang Theory: What was Sheldon's catchphrase? Um, a, bazinga. A, bazinga. Trina said, "Meow." <laughs> Don't know where she got that one from. Well, he did sing that song, <laughs> Soft Kitty. Remember? Oh. Remember Soft yes. Kitty? Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking about. Ah, gotcha. Soft Kitty was a jam. Yeah. Bazinga is correct. So it is a 2 nothing victory for Kira Lou. Please give us the phrase of shame. Nice game. Nice try. Well, I'm Trina from Maine, and I can't be... Kira. Live from Town Square Media. Oh, yeah. With Chio and Kira in the morning. Second Ed Update brought to you by Marquee Roofing online at marqueeroofing.com. Tim in Dover. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? Good. Kira's right here with me, so we'd love to hook you up on that second date with Julie. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, I hope you can make it happen. Uh, we met on Tinder. I thought we had an instant connection, right? And we started talking on the app. It was comfortable and easy and you know we start asking lots of questions trying to get to know each other and it, it was nice you know it didn't feel one-sided mm -hmm. you know like sometimes it's like women expect the guy to do all the work and all the questions and they just do a one word yes no response <laughs> it was none of that it was, it was like a good good interaction for a bit and then we decided to meet in person and julie said she was dying to go to salem right around halloween time so that's what we did you know, we took a little road trip, walked nice. around Salem. It's like a total scene. Uh, we went to a few bars, had some food. We took some fun pictures. There was this guy dressed up like Mike Myers. We, we took some funny photos of that. And that was that. You know, I thought it was a really fun day. And uh, it ended with, uh, yeah, we should do this again sometime. Like, she seemed to have a good time. I had a good time. And she won't even text me back now. And I, I can't figure out why. Wow, that sounds like a cool date, man. That's kind of different. Yeah, that's fun, especially this time of year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, we were laughing. The conversation was mostly pretty easy. Like, I, I don't know what happened. Did she know you guys were doing the Salem thing? Was that, that, that was planned out, right? Like, you know, maybe she may not like Halloween. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, you know, meet me for coffee and I'm abducting you to Salem for right, eight hours. Right, no, right, right. No, no, it was right. Salem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, I was just double-checking on that, you know, maybe uh, that's not That's my... a full day trip, so yeah. you want to commit to that beforehand. Yeah, okay. All right, Tim. Yeah. We're going to put you on hold and uh, you're going to give us Julie's phone number. We are going to call Julie next on Second Date Update and see, get her version of how she saw the night play out. Let's hope it's good news and uh, someone someone had to go to the hospital and that's why she can't text yeah, me back. Of right? Yes, <laughs> of course. We hope that's not the case.
All right, it's a second date update on number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ and 103.7 The Peak. We'll make that phone call next. Chio and Kira in the morning. Escape to Florida with Owen oh, Green. Look at the pictures you posted. You wondered what happened, felt kind of abandoned. Oh, snap, it looks like you've been ghosted. Let Chio and Kira make the call for you. They'll set that second date up for you. Second date update, second date update. Chio and Kira's second date update. Let's go, let's do this. Second date update brought to you by Marquee Roofing online at MarqueeRoofing.com. All right, so we did get a hold of Julie, and she has agreed to come on the air with us. Uh, she knows that she is on our feature called Second Date Update. Just trying to get a little bit of clarity uh, for our friend and our listener, Tim. We know you guys went out on a date, and from where he was sitting, he thought it was like one of the best dates ever, that you guys had a really fun day in Salem. So did he do something wrong because he can't get a text back from you, and he was hoping to see you again? Tim did not do something wrong. He's a super nice guy. I really like him. Um, <laughs> but it, it, I, I had to just stop talking to him because it wouldn't be fair to string him along is basically my feeling. Um, I went to a psychic and this is going to sound crazy, but I, I have a psychic who I really, really trust. And I've been going to her for a really long time. And um like for example, um, she predicted my my dad was going to pass away suddenly, and he did. Um, so wow. unless the psychic killed my dad, this is a really good psychic. I went to the psychic, and the psychic was not pumped about Tim, and so that is my reasoning. After the date, you saw the psychic, and yeah, right, right, okay. So and you were just uh, like, no. "Where is this going?" I said, "You know, I went on a date, and I was kind of into the guy, and um, we had a really nice time." And uh, my psychic said, you know, it's just, it's not going to work out. Like, this guy wow. is not, this is not your person. And wow. so I just really trust her. And so I'm not going to waste Tim's time and I'm not going to waste my time if we're not meant to be. I, I, I feel like I sound like an insane person, but I mean, she's been right in the past. So it's kind of like, what's the point if, if, I'm continuing to date if we're not going to be right for each other. Now, I know of some people who swear by psychics to make a decision on that, and she's hit before. Okay. What we didn't tell you is that Tim is on the line. Okay. Okay. You know, he had a good time. <laughs> you had a good time. So he just wanted to know what's up. So could I bring him in to at least get, get closure? Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Tim, did you hear what she had to say? Yeah. Wow. Really? The you don't want to do a second date because your psychic said not to? Wow. You don't think that's a little ridiculous? I get that. I'm, I'm really sorry, Tim. I, I just trust Mariah's intuition. Like, she's able to see things that, that, you know, other people can't. She doesn't even know me. She's never even, like... Seen me, I understand, like, if you're like, hey, this is my friend Mariah, we met, and then she's like, oh, he has bad energy or whatever, like, she's never met me, what, what? I, and I have good vibes, I don't, this is so, just weird. Yeah. I mean, general, you do, you have good vibes, but, like, after I was, after I saw Mariah, I was reflecting on our date, and I'm thinking about the reading that she gave me, and I did, it made me think, like, I, I started to think about some moments where we were just, like, out of sync, and maybe it wasn't perfect, and it did feel a little strange. Yeah, it was a first date. It's not going to be perfect. Of course, it's going to feel a little strange here or there, you know? We were strangers getting to know each other, like... like. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want you to get upset. I mean, like, this is this is what I mean. Like, your energy just feels, like, slightly off to me, and, and that, to me, just proves Mariah right. Hold on, Tim. I gotta worry about... Hold on, Tim. Too. Tim, hold on one second. Julie, we are calling to see... I, I guess there's nothing to see, actually, to be honest with you. Cause, so the whole thing for this is to see if you will go on on a second date. But in this case, uh, the psychic says uh, not a good fit, so you don't want to waste your time. No sense asking you, yeah. right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I got to go with Mariah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thanks for coming on the air with us to to explain. At, at least now, you know, now Tim knows. At least he knows. Yeah. Thanks so much. Tim, that was your... 
not what you wanted to hear, man, but you know. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at least, at least I know, like, I'm fine on a date. The actual date was good. I didn't do anything yeah. weird or bad no. on the date. No. Just a second woman who I've never met, she doesn't like me, so I guess I can't date the first woman anymore. That's yeah. great. Well, some people swear by psychics, so sorry we couldn't help you, okay? And best of luck to you both. Thanks for clarifying it, at least. Bye. Bet, man. Want to reach out to Chio and Kira? Text them from the app. Chio and Kira in the morning. Famous people 411. Next. It's Kira.